All right, we are really getting to that point where I am sharing some of my pretty big secrets. Kind of, I already have the one video that went through how to set up a custom checkbox control for your presets. And today we are tackling custom drop down menus. Now the motivation for this effect came uh, very recently when I was helping Scott from the Nerd Sync channel. He makes great videos, check him out. A link to his channel will be in the description, but he has also been in the process of moving to DaVinci Resolve. Any transition like that can be a little bumpy. so I helped him out with a custom effect. One thing he does all the time is show off different clips. Sometimes they're old TV recordings, sometimes they're standard 16 by nine video, and sometimes they're this stretch 21 nine aspect ratio. And he works in a, a double wide timeline. He also has a very specific style he was looking for. So I whipped up a little preset that shrinks down the main focus just here, rounds these corners and gets a nice uh, blurred and darkened background layer that comes from this source footage. But it was important that this one effect work on all these different aspect ratios uh, of source clips. So you have a similar looking effect um, no matter what you want to bring in and showcase. And when it comes to using this effect, you have this really handy drop down menu. So I am going to be walking through a bare bones setup for how to achieve a custom drop down menu that can have drastic control over your presets and templates. To the fusion page. I'm gonna make sure I am in effects, drag a fusion composition onto our timeline. We can stretch it out a little if we want. And then with our playhead over that composition, I'm gonna click this button to load into the fusion page. Now to demonstrate, we are going to have a very simple scene. I'm going to create three background layers. The first will be red. The second will be green. And the final will be blue. I can preview all of those. Red, green, blue. Awesome. And now to connect all of them and get them to our media out, instead of the standard merge node, I'm going to create a dissolve node. We'll have the red into the background of the dissolve, the green into the foreground, and then on our second dissolve, we're gonna have that first node going into the background, that blue node into the foreground, and then finally to our media out. And even before we set anything up with custom controls or expressions, um, we can start to see the bones of how this will work. These dissolves default to foreground and they are controlled by this one slider. If I preview this first dissolve, we see green, but if I pull the slider down to background, you see now you are seeing red and that is because it has completely shifted from showing us the foreground layer, this green solid layer to the background layer, this red solid layer. So you can just toggle those back and forth. You can slide, but we're not gonna do any sliding. We are going to be all one or all the other. So let me actually pull that up on viewer one and dissolve on viewer two. Here you see this blue one because again, it's on foreground, but we can trigger that to background. And now whatever we change this first dissolve to, you will also see on the second one because the second dissolve is set to background. Now we need to create one custom control that both of these slider functions can look at and depending on that custom control, uh, they will change accordingly. Let's do it. I'm gonna create this just on this dissolve to node for expediency. I'm gonna right click and go to edit controls. This is an unbelievably powerful window. You can go in and uh, change a lot of the included default uh, controls on any node, but we are going to create a new control. I'm gonna change this name to best color. I'm not just calling this color because you do have to be a little uh, careful with common names like color or position or center or angle, because if you use them on a node where there is already a control with that name, you can run into issues. So we'll call this one best color and then users can select which color they think is best. And after that, I'm coming down in this input control field to multi button control. And you see now it adds this list on the right and then we can start entering the things we want to appear on our drop down menu, like red, I'll click add, green, add, and blue. Now I believe this range value um, should work differently than it does right now. I don't believe putting in numbers here actually does anything. It will assign a value starting at zero. So red will be zero, green will be one, blue will be two. So we can just click okay and move on. And now in the inspector, when that node is selected, we have this user control. I will click that and hey, we have a drop down menu. It does nothing right now, but it's there. It looks great and we can move on. And now we can dip into the scary, scary world of expressions. I'm gonna come to this first dissolve, 
right click on this background foreground slider and come down to expression. And now we can type a custom expression in this foreground option. And we are going to type if with two eyes, this is important, IIF, open parentheses, then we can type in the name of the node we wanted to look at, dissolve to, dot, the name of the parameter we want to look at, best color, no spaces included in these, so it's just best color with no space, equals equals zero, comma, zero, comma, one, close parentheses. So what this means, it's looking at that best color dropdown menu, and if that returns zero, meaning if that red is selected, then set this background foreground slider to zero, meaning background. If not, set it to one or foreground. If I click off, hey, it jumps to red. That's very interesting. If I select this background node, we see it's because red is selected. If I select green, then that dissolve node slider is shifted to foreground. So red, green, red, red, green. If I set it to blue, it returns green, remember, because this is only sliding between red and green. If we want it to show blue, we need to add an expression on this second dissolve node. We already have that selected, so I can hop back to controls, right click on this expression and type in IIF open parentheses. I don't believe you need to point to the node if it's in the same node, but we're going to do it anyway. Dissolve to dot best color equals equals. So here we have to do a little different. So we only want this to be set to foreground when that drop down menu is set to blue, AKA when it is returning a value of two. So two, set that to one. If not, set it to zero, close parentheses. Now we can check out what we've got going on. I will preview dissolve one on viewer one, dissolve two on viewer two. I can jump over to user where this is set to red and we can start uh, testing this menu. Right now it is set to red and we are getting red both from dissolve one and dissolve two. Dissolve one is set to background, dissolve two is set to background. If we set this to green, dissolve one is set to foreground and dissolve two is still set to background, so it's passing through. If we set this to blue, dissolve one, it's still set to foreground, so it's showing green, but it knows it doesn't matter at that point because dissolve two is now set to foreground, showing us blue, and that is what is also showing on our media out and will eventually get sent to the edit page as well. Okay, if that was a little complicated, I understand. But believe it or not, like I said, that is about as simple as it can get. You could always do this just with one dissolve, but I wanted to show um, that you can layer these dissolves on top of each other. You just have to be a little careful with your expressions. And this can get wild very quickly. I've previously created a preset, a social media pop-up promo that has 100 different included options for websites or apps that you can promote. And it's built on this system. It has a drop down menu with a hundred different options. And whatever you select, that drives a field of dissolve nodes. That got a little intense. But the core functionality here is so powerful. We are just piping background layers into this effect, but you can switch up anything. You can have a drop down menu that drastically changes the entire design or entire functionality of your effect. And once you have it set up, you can package that up, save it as a macro, load it into the edit page and have it be completely drag and drop on the edit page. You don't need to touch fusion anymore. I've done several videos about that if you're ready for that step. But if you are still in the process of building your presets, building your templates, this is really a foundational must know tool. And it's very cool. I hope this is useful. I know it is a little more complicated than just a fun text effect or something like that. But I know so many more people are diving in all the time to fusion presets and templates and macros. I'm here to help. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.